on nature, the fifth day of understanding of life and nature. And today we'll be speaking about the challenges of the path with a lot of reference to letters on yoga. Um, very much looking forward to this session. So over to you, Monica. Yeah, thank you so much, James. So I, I thought we'll uh, begin with maybe a little short meditation uh, today. Um, just uh, on the same lines as we have been doing earlier. So um, what do you suggest, James? Uh, shall I wait for a minute or so or maybe for the other people to join? Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's not quite not quite carrying the right sort of number at the moment, I'm afraid. Yeah, uh, so let, let's uh, have a moment of silence maybe, and then after that, we can yes, start. Yes, let's have a moment of silence. We yeah. didn't have that yet. Yeah. Yeah, so welcome everyone uh, to the fifth day today. So we'll uh, start with this prayer as we have been, I think most of the days we have been going through. And if one of you would like to read the prayer, it would be nice. Anyone who feels ready to read the prayer. Yes, Monica. Ah, oh, Sarada. Yes, yes, please. Yeah. Shall I read? Yeah, James was telling something. No, no, I, I was just uh, going to choose you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Please go ahead. Yeah. yeah. May I be a God for those who need protection, a guide for those on the path, a boat, a raft, a bridge for those who wish to cross the flood. May I be a lamp in the darkness, a resting place for the weary, a healing medicine for all who are sick, a vase of plenty, a tree of miracles, and for the boundless multitudes of living beings. May I bring sustenance and awakening, enduring like the earth and sky, until all beings are freed from sorrow, and all are awakened. Yeah, thank you so much, Sharada ji. I think you really <laughs> said it very nicely. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. So, um, yes, James, yeah. you want to yes, share? It was beautifully, beautifully expressed by Sarada, actually. Exactly, yes. yes. Yeah, very nice. So thank I you, think, Sarada. you know, yeah, it's a beautiful example of uh, how to use the vital properly, you know, <laughs> because vital is this sensitive part in us, the, you know, the one with feelings and emotions. And 
uh, most often than not, we have negativity going on in that area. So we can transform into positive emotions, you know, deep empathy, deep care, deep sensitivity. And just like Sharada ji was reading it out, you know, with a lot of kind of, and one can say devotion, you know, uh, it was very obvious in her voice. So yeah, thank you for a live demonstration, you know, there. So uh, today's topic is challenges on the path. And when I was thinking about the topic, uh, I realized that maybe I didn't choose the right topic. It, it should have been challenges are the path, not that there are obstacles on the path, but challenges are the path because if there are no challenges, no progress, nothing is needed. But that if there are challenges, only then progress can happen. Only then path is there. And that's also very adventurous. So um, we'll be talking about challenges, what can be, and you are most welcome to add on to the list. I have prepared a list. And then what are the tools that are there with us uh, to take care of de or deal uh, with the challenges in a positive way? And uh, I think, yeah, we'll just start from there. Just a second. So mother says all difficulties lie within us. And uh, the moment I say that, okay, something may be happening at, you know, in the external situation, some person may be behaving wrongly or, you know, some situation may not be going according to what I plan, uh, you know, uh, like that. But uh, if I see that whatever is happening in external situation, I have to change something within me. I think the moment we think about that, as if we reclaim all the power back, you know, otherwise, we give give away our power to people, situations, you know, when this will get fixed, when that will get fixed, when that person will behave in that particular way, then only I'll be okay. But now when I take this responsibility on my own self, that uh, if I'm dealing with a difficulty outside, let me see what is there to transform within me. I think the whole game changes, we reclaim the power back. You know, the whole powerhouse with us is with us. And we all know that uh, we, we will never be able to fix other people, but we always have the mastery or control that we can work on ourselves. It's the right place to work, you know, working on ourselves. So, and also the other part of this phrase by the mother, you know, all difficulties lie within us. Uh, other point is that it may seem that I am a separate person, I have a separate body and you are a separate person, you are a separate body and you end there and I end here, but that is, not so. We are not just bodies. So when mother is saying all difficulties lie within us, see, she's also pointing, I believe, to the oneness, shared oneness of our existence. That it may appear that if I smoke a cigarette, I'm just harming myself. But I'm also harming everything that is connected. You know, so we are all one. Even superficially, we are all one. And internally, since we share this being of oneness, which, have, which we have been concentrating on, concentrating on through all of our you know, meditations and also focusing again and again to coming back, taking stance as this conscious presence, the knowing within. That knowing is the shared being. You have the same knowing, I have the same knowing. Knowing is not black or white. Knowing is not Indian or German. Knowing is knowing. Knowing is not a child or adult. It's the same knowing everywhere, you know, just like space continues everywhere. So there also, I believe this uh, something by the mother hints at that all difficulties, it's all one. You know? So uh, it's, it's good to work on ourselves. And also the, the other thing that I was sharing was that we reclaim our power. We don't give our power away and feel weak that, oh my God, these things are not changing. The person is not behaving well. What should I do? You know, now I know all the work lies within me. So I have enough to do. And now I also want to share the story of creation by the mother because there would be darkness. There would be challenges on the path because challenges are the path. So why is that so? Why is life so difficult? You know, one may ask that why is it full of struggle often? The idea is that it's full of adventure. If there is no struggle, if there is no unfolding, all of it I know already, you know, then there is no adventure. 
spirit of adventure. So in the story of creation, I'm sure some of us who are connected with Mother and Shorabindo may have heard about it. So I'll just share on it shortly. Uh, the first time I heard it was from Dr. Ananda Reddy and it was a very beautiful explanation, uh, you know, very catchy. So he explained something like this, that when it was just one, you know, the divine, and there was nothing else. And then he decided maybe, you know, let us have some Leela or play. So he manifested Aditi or Shakti out of himself and gave the work of manifestation or creation to the Shakti, Aditi, the divine mother, what we call, you know, Shakti uh, coming out of consciousness. And uh, in effect, Aditi or the divine mother, she manifested, uh, emanated four powers. And those four powers were given the work of creation. Now, these four powers were consciousness, uh, truth, bliss, and life. Uh, these were the four powers emanated with, uh, you know, out of the mother. And mother said, okay, do the work. It's like almost, you know, you give child 10 rupees and you say, okay, go get the bread. And the child goes to the shop, but he says, now I have the money. I can do anything with the money. <laughs> you know, no parent is watching me. Okay, let me, you know, enjoy a little. So something like that, you know, just in a funny way, something like that happened. And uh, all these emanations kind of disconnected from their original source or the parent. Hmm? So in this disconnection, in this feeling lost, consciousness became unconsciousness. They inverted since they, you know, disconnected from the source. Truth became falsehood. Bliss became suffering. And life became death. And I, I hope you don't go into the logic of the story because this is just a very uh, kind of a hinty idea of how things upturned, you know, for the play to happen. Now, mother says that the souls decided that we will plunge into this adventure and we will make this turning happen. We will turn unconsciousness to consciousness, falsehood to truth, suffering to bliss and death to life. Because souls are imm immortal. Consciousness is immortal. You know? Divine presence is immortal. So this psychic being was then sent. You know, this presence of our unique true individuality was sent into the matter so that it kind of brings the matter out of this inertia and unconsciousness and ignorance. Hmm? So that, that's where we are right now. And that's where we are most of the time unconscious. Most of the time, we don't know what's happening in our own being, unconsciousness, unawareness. That's why so much of focus on become conscious of your movements. Hmm? Working from the egoistic consciousness, falsehood, right? Because there is actually no separation, but ego thinks I am a separate being. So let me uh, fulfill my own desire. You know, I don't care about the others. And suffering exists in each one of lives. You know, attachment exists, suffering exists. And death, you know, that uh, you cannot go on like immortality, ki jage immo, you know, there is mortality. You know, all those souls are immortal. The divine consciousness is immortal. It goes on and on and on. But uh, the matter has lost connection with this, its divine uh, source, immortal source. So that has to be awakened. That's why mother talks about this new race uh, where even the matter, the body would be different. You know, it will remember the divine essence. Each cell will have that luminosity. So uh, that is to share, you know, I, why I'm sharing this story. Because it's okay. It's okay to go through challenges. It does not mean that you are less spiritual or somebody else is more spiritual. Everybody has challenges. Who on earth does not have challenges? Whether the person is on spiritual path or a non-spiritual path, doesn't matter. So they will be there. Now, the next thing that comes is, now that they will be there, they are there, uh, can I now begin to deal with it nicely? Can I have the best possible uh, attitude to facing these challenges? Can I become like an earthworm, you know, who changes all the rubbish into compost? Is that possible? So I feel, uh, I, you know, personally feel that all, everyone has different soft spots. 
so i may be attached to maybe my children or maybe my spouse for you and that may be my area of work for you the repetitive thoughts may be about your parents so that may be your area of work so each one of us is attached to something or the other more strongly in our life maybe someone is attached to name fame ambition workplace and those thoughts become repetitive in our head they keep on churning and churning and churning and hence i am not able to come back to the breath because the moment i stay with breath for a short period of time again i'll get lost into the thoughts because they appear so juicy as if i'm going to get something there so these are the soft spots these are the places where i am attached in this life and these are the places of my inner work from here i have to disentangle disentangle slowly knowing again and again myself as the conscious presence there is no other way that detachment can happen and if we remain attached and clinging because things will change people will change workplace will change everything keeps on changing every life a person and person has his own journey i cannot have control and i will suffer i'll continue to suffer so it's very important for me to again and again realize that yes i have these soft spots these are my challenges i do get stuck in these domains again and again but i want to overcome i want to know my truth i want to again and again take the stance as the conscious presence and know that all that does not have that much of importance as much i give it now other challenges can be depression will come at times sometimes thoughts can be too overwhelming you forget the breath you forget the stance and you are too much in doubt it can happen one goes through it shorobindo himself says that at one point of time for months he was suffering from depression and even that could not stop him he says that even while going through that depression he was giving advice and suggestions to people so it's okay to go through it then other challenge may be uh, losing the experience maybe you had a beautiful connection with your inner self knowing yourself as the conscious presence you had a beautiful stable experience and something really intense happens in life and i lose the experience and now i am frustrated oh my god oh my god i am not feeling good enough you know when will i get that experience again so that again is the work of vital it, it gets agitated mental agitation and that in fact interferes in getting back to the touch with the conscious presence again so to be cautious of it that these are things with, that will happen um and when our vigilance falters you know when i am not vigilant enough and the crowd of thoughts come and i again enter into the loop of thinking and thinking and thinking obsessive thinking addicted to it not able to master it faltering vigilance then things will happen i will lose myself into the drama i will forget that i am the actor things will weigh heavy on me and again i will connect to the breath and i will be okay i will learn from those experiences and when i get lost in the drama and the for, uh, forest of thought Uh, in the words of saint kabir he says that it's like a forest of thought with full of thorns you get stuck again and again so the other uh, tool that we have discussed earlier was tonglen the moment i recognize that again i have entered into the forest of thought and i am suffering i connect with all the people who are suffering entering again and again in repetitive patterns of thought and emotions and i inhale their suffering and i exhale a uh, wellness and contentment for everyone and in the beginning resistance may come that why can i why should i inhale everyone else's suffering when i am not even able to take care of my own but uh, i think it's only practice and by practice you will see how beautiful uh, this can be a transformation of my own brain to a flower it can change uh, immediately boredom can happen one challenge is sometimes uh, if we are too much lost in the thoughts boredom can happen the tool is to come back again to something good something higher pure lofty maybe have a conversation with a company uh, or or a friend who brings you back on the track again you know so that's the beauty of taking refuge in satsang that it reminds us again and again any company that reminds us 
so in buddhism there is uh, you know they say that we have to take three places for refuge the buddha the dharma and the sangha sangha is the community the dharma is all the scriptures and words full of illumination buddha is all the enlightened beings your master your guru remembering the mother and things again shift then mother says other challenge can be self satisfaction that you think that you have you have now illuminated you know i have found the psychic being and now not, there is nothing much to do maybe i i can guide other people but for me there is nothing to do so self satisfaction and then it's okay to have that once in a while uh, and we are lucky because then we get a blow <laughs> so we are grounded again whenever we feel too comfortable in our settled in our zones then we you know we get grounded again that's okay by any blow that comes any challenge that comes so we have to be really grateful for all the blows because they ground us again and again they bring us back to the ground that a lot of work is to still be done the other uh, challenge is not to be aware of the clinging and grasping mind since we were talking in the beginning that the whole journey is from the desire soul to the true soul we all cling there is this limited little ego from coming from the mind which clings you know yes this will make me complete that will make me complete clings persons relationships jobs money you know even spiritual stuff can become a, a clinging thing right instead of de clinging it can actually cling but that's okay because uh, ultimately it allows us to de cling right so uh, to be aware to be vigilant of the clinging uh, quality of the mind okay today i am suffering what am i clinging to okay i am feeling a little unhappy what am i clinging to so catching those insincerities catching that clinging and then letting go of it then uh, i think uh, there can be many many a times we are not prepared and intense circumstances may happen in life in relationships and again that is a challenge but then if i am prepared that yes they will happen and i will learn and progress through it it's okay to go through them we will always have a learning in the hand and before a complete conversion happens that you are unable to be shaken away from uh, your stance as a conscious presence this pendulum like movement will go on sometimes i am too much clinging sometimes i am very easy and okay with myself again for one year i was okay but now in the second year i feel like i am too much clinging and going as if away from my true essence so this pendulum like movement will happen no one uh, can escape it and why it happens because something or the other needs to be cleaned some purification needs to happen so just taking all in our stride stride and walking on and on always as mother says always going forward always going forward so the tools that we have Uh, i think we have already touched upon these tools the tools are uh, we will touch upon prayer today by prayers uh, and meditations by the mother we will touch upon that faith i think uh, one cannot stress enough the importance of good faith that yes the universe is there for me the divine is there for me so even if a worst possible situation is happening there must be some good there there must be some good right so having that faith and also being very okay in my own company because things will change people will change even the bestest of friends will leave you you will have to maybe go away from your spiritual masters nothing is permanent in this world everything is fleeting so but i am not fleeting because as long as i am alive i am there with myself you know so can i be my own bestest friend is that a possibility that i have such a rich life i'm always learning or you know reading something or making you know maybe create creativity or helping you know spending time in helping or meditative stances you know doing meditation anything that suits the nature anything that makes you one drop of a poison less in this whole ocean that we have of you know um, evil many a times so having a very rich quality of life uh, even when you are alone 
all by yourself. So that is something which cannot be escaped. You know, we need to have an individual alone life, which is very beautiful. In irrespective of whether people are around me or not around me, I have to be very, very okay. Even at times when I'm not okay, it's okay. You know, I'll go through this since everything passes, this time will also pass. Then we can always call for help. We can always call for help. And that's what a prayer is about. An aspiration is about that there is a willingness and there is a call for help. And Mother and Sri have stressed enough even in Savitri that whenever a call is there, you know, it's like the divine descent comes like, an, like a falcon, very fast. You know, it's the fastest animal a predator. You know, it comes stooping down to the prey. So just like that, the descent of the divine grace happens. But I have to call. I have to call. Without the call, uh, uh, you know, in Harry Potter, uh, this Dumbledore, he says that those who uh, call for help, they will always receive it. But if I don't even call, you know, mother says that the guy is tackling all the situations by itself. So what's the need for me to intervene? So call is required. Then today we will be talking about also the Aryan or the warrior spirit, uh, the Aryan spirit, which Sri Aurobindo has in detail talked about. Warrior spirit coming from Saint Kabir. He talks of a warrior spirit that those people who are on this path, uh, uh, they are the warriors. They are true warriors. So we will talk about that. And then also whenever we lose ourselves in the drama, as we were talking earlier also, bringing the puppy back. When we get lost too much in the glitter of the world, coming back to the breath and the body and connecting with the conscious presence. It cannot be stressed enough. Good company, satsang, as we were talking of, you know, what is the kind of company I'm keeping? And uh, it's, it's good that if we have good friends around, sorry, if, if we have good friends or anybody, you know, even mentors or uh, spiritual guides around me uh, who I can seek because from time to time we need help. No, nobody can do it all by itself. We all need help. We all need gurus and masters and helpers on the way. Each one of us is helping uh, the walk back home. So uh, immersing ourselves in good company and as I was saying yesterday the company of the mind is the baddest company mostly. This repetitive going back into the obsession of past, future, worries, anxiety, panic, insecurity. This is the company we usually have. So changing that company, maybe reading something higher, lofty, reading the words of Mother Shri Aurobindo, instead of ruminating and thinking, something like that. So uh, yeah, that's it. And it cannot be stressed enough that when we have good times, when we are not drenched in suffering, there to remember us ourselves as the conscious presence. So imagine that actor, we were using this example of the actor, the actor goes out, he plays the role in a movie and the role is very good. So he doesn't care to remember himself as the, as the actor. But when the role becomes really challenging and suffering comes owing to the script of the movie, then he is pressed to know himself as the actor, that it's only a story. Don't you know have a, too much of a fuss about it. So, but when I have, I have not practiced enough in good times, it becomes a little challenging to do it in the hard times because I'm not used to. Hmm? So Sri Krishna says that uh, whoever comes to me takes refuge in me. You know, whenever he's leaving the body, he comes to me. Now we don't know when we are leaving the body. <laughs> That's the point. It can happen anytime. So I should be in refuge of Krishna or, you know, whatever I have faith in at all the moments, at all the moments, because I don't know when death will arrive. Each moment is very precious. So even in so-called pleasurable good times, if I can conscient, uh, consciously connect back again and again, knowingly as conscious presence, then even the so-called good cannot sway me high up in the air. Because it, it doesn't matter much. Yeah, so what if I have achieved a success? It's okay. It's all work of grace. And so what if I have gone down? I can come back again. 
so it leaves us in a place of equanimity where we can look at good and bad as equals bad makes us learn and good also makes us learn because it can throw up high in the air and then we have to come down and then uh, instead of asking and asking for my own happiness my own contentment and my little life can i offer myself to the divine can i offer myself to the world you know it's like almost a wave giving itself back to the ocean it does not want any separate identity of itself now it knows that it's the best to know myself as the ocean large vast supple rich always full so instead of asking and asking and you know you fulfill me i am the victim and you know this person insulted me 30 years ago 40 years ago i am still carrying that instead of that uh, you know we can make mothers use in also that sense that mother i give myself to you now you tell me what is the right way to live and we are all guided we will know what is the right way so getting out of this prison of self preservation this prison of the ego and only i am the one who has the key the key is to let go the key is to offer yourself that's the key so uh, just a second i just stop the share here uh, the other thing i wanted to share was that uh, this practice of coming back to oneself you know coming back to our truth as conscious presence it's a new thing right now i am too much practiced living as an ego too much practiced into it so it will happen that when i am developing this new habit new life it will happen that i am trapped again and again but don't to get, not to get discouraged because of that hmm? so new habits take time to develop you know imagine that you are a very untidy person and you keep on missing your goggles or you know whatever glasses that you wear so now you are consciously making a habit that okay whenever i want to put my glasses i will put it here in this box many a times you will forget and that's okay but the more i consciously do make that practice of putting the goggles back there back there back there slowly i would feel uneasy when i am not putting the goggles back there glasses back there so a new kind of simplicity will arrive only after a bit of effort and then i can feel uneasy when i am out of center whenever i am out of center i will feel uneasy and through that uneasiness the signal of uneasiness i will know okay i have to root myself again something has really swayed me hmm? and uh, there are a few game changers which i want to share here now we all cling to things persons situations our own opinions thoughts and ideas even if we want to cling can we cling to the highest can we cling to knowing ourselves as the conscious presence so it's okay to cling but cling at the right place not to people and life situations because they will keep on changing right so clinging is okay there is no problem with clinging but clinging to the right center of my being that's one the other is that we all know uh, how to put effort most often than not we are putting effort at the wrong place we want to fix situation fix people you know and all the energy we drain in that right in fixing people and situation so we all know how to put effort it's not that we are lazy but we put effort at a wrong place so to put effort to knowingly know myself as the conscious presence that's the effort that is required we all have the energy we all can do that so it's like this i was going into this direction now i have to change the direction i have the fuel i have the petrol diesel whatever is required fuel is not a problem but now through my own understanding i change the gully the street i change so again clinging is okay cling to the right thing effort is also we have but effort putting in the right direction 
letting go we were talking of letting go also in the previous sessions that we have to let go now we know how to let go all of us know how to let go but but we let go of wrong things <laughs> we let go of me knowing myself as the conscious presence i have to let go of rest everything and just not to let go of knowing myself as the conscious presence all that is ephemeral fleeting i have to let go let go is not that i would you know renounce and maybe go into an ashram not like that letting go in the sense living a bit non sticky way people will come and go situations will come and go can i be just okay with it yeah yeah uh, i think that was about the tools now i would like to get on to prayer by the mother and shurabindu uh, prayers by the mother and uh, also the part where i wanted to share on warrior and aryan spirit so before that are there any reflections i think i've shared at a stretch maybe too much are there any questions or reflections monica oh, excuse me yeah yes sophie please excuse me i have a question uh, regarding um the children this work is like so hard but um are you seeing results with children who are being trained by uh people practicing the integral yoga and teaching them not to think not to give in to their vital movements yeah so uh, sophie i believe that thinking is not a problem but uh, addiction to thinking is the problem and so it's it's there uh, thoughts are there for a reason as we were talking yesterday so it's good to imagine but most often than not we have no break over that no no mastery over that okay that now i want to stop down this continuous churning of thoughts and i am able to so the thing is that to develop mastery a little control if not mastery a little control that i keep on coming back to the breath again and again so i have the only example i have uh, which is very close uh, and hence i can share it uh, in the sense that since i am on the path and i experiment it also with my children my children are 9 and say seven and a half and i see that whatever i share with them they understand so if i talk about coming back to the breath again and again they understand it if i talk about uh, counting 21 conscious breaths they understand and they many a times you know uh, do it and then they are able to set kind of settle down their vital energies and bring their body to the rest like the churning to the rest and there are also a few friends who are on the path and they are much sensitive to their children and then whatever they are doing it trickles down to the children also especially little ones oh, so i think super. yeah yeah so i think it will make a difference just like if you are blossoming you know like a flower is blossoming it is impossible that it does not give out the fragrance so okay it, it's indirect yeah and it happens i i i see thank that you. yeah thank you thank you yeah yeah anyone else anything at this point so uh, monica um, as you said <laughs> this bringing back the breath is very very difficult as you said you know thousand times in a day when i was cooking i always you know start with um, i have to be mindful i have to be in my breath but you know after few minutes it just goes away and again i feel very ashamed you know how many times <laughs> i have to tell you i'll tell my mind but still maybe i don't know how long it is going to take but definitely it is good i i'm trying <laughs> hopefully yeah. one day uh, yeah so sharada ji the thing is that uh, when we get lost yeah and again get lost in the forest of thought yeah uh, to be shameful or guilty is yet another thought okay okay don't give it so much importance you say okay i lost track let me get back on the track again simple keep it very simple because guilt and shame is another forest 
Okay. So you have to do it very shamelessly. You have to do it very shamelessly. That okay, I got lost. Okay. But let me come back now. So uh, not to see ourselves in a judgmental way that if I was able to, you know, uh, maybe count thousand conscious breaths, I am a better person. <laughs> okay. And if I lost the way, I am a very, you know, sinful person. Okay. Not to go there. Just keep it very simple. Keep on coming back to the breath without guilt, without shame. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So Claudia is sharing, what do you think to do mantras when we do an activity? Uh, I think mantras are good way uh, in the sense that they make the mind one pointed, right? So many people with whom they resonate, uh, for many they may not resonate, but if we chant a mantra, uh, it helps us keep our discursive mind, which is always thinking about either this, that, and then that, and that maybe past or future, it, we are all, all scattered. So when we are focusing on a mantra, it is a good practice in concentrating the mind pinpointedly on something which is only one thing. You know? But having said that, many a times we do it very mechanically. Very, very mechanically. That's not the way. If we can be, uh, if we can put a drop of devotion in the mantra, a drop of true heart in the mantra. Even if you're not saying it 100 times, you know, five times, 10 times, okay, you know, it has done his work. So the idea is not to just keep on chanting mechanically, like, like we do maybe brush. We don't even know and we have brushed. So to be, to be very conscious of whatever I'm doing, to add this drop of true consciousness, as mother says, in whatever you do, so if it suits you, if it resonates with you, very, you know, very good, you go ahead with it. But then also remember that just chanting a mantra, mantra would not do anything. But with consciousness connecting to the power and spirit behind that mantra, you know, that may be a game changer. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Hi, Monica. I noticed that for me, the, the doing the 21, I've done it, I forget, and I have to come back to it, like the participant for beforehand. And I don't, I don't have trouble doing that, just repeating and coming back to it. The place that I have a challenge with is um, like, you know, staying on the bank of the river and then watching the thoughts. It's like I notice that at that like it's somehow I get it but to be able to do it to not get entangled you know and then it's I'm off I've lost the story and so if you have any suggestions for how you know how to like stabilize this there I am just on just like watching as if the thoughts are flowing by or like being being sky and letting it be clouds it's like I get it I absolutely get it but to actually do it if mm. there's mm. Yeah. yeah the practice of it the only thing that we can say is persist. There is no other way. You know, the first time we learn any instrument, violin or, you know, a difficult one, it, we don't get it. Fingers hurt. We are playing all the tunes wrongly. You know, the guitar is not tuned properly. We don't even recognize. And we have to go through that discomfort. So the only thing is uh, the practice 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 if you are convinced about it that is you know, that's very important that if you are convinced this is the way for you you know if uh, uh, kabir says in one of the couplet he says saache guru ke paksh mein man ko de thehrai chanchal se nischal bhaya nahi aave nahi jaye so he means if you have found a true path or a true guru or a true method whatever you rest your mind there don't flicker now. But you must be sure that that's the path. That conviction has to be there. So in favor of the true guru, in favor of the true tool or the method, you rest your mind. And now the mind rested from a monkey mind becomes a mind of a langur, for example. A much more rested mind. Not as jumpy as a monkey mind. 
So once we know this tool is good enough, just to give ourselves to that tool. There is no other way. We all go through that discomfort when we sit for meditation for 45 minutes, but all that was happening was breath and then going back to the forest and breath and going back to the forest. We all go through that. You know? And also to recognize that whenever I'm going into the forest, that's my soft spot. I'm attached there. Mm -hmm. I must be thinking about some or the other particular person or thing. That's what I was sharing. We all have soft spots. So uh, not to get too uh, kind of attracted to that glitter. There is nothing there. You won't find satisfaction there. To be convinced about that slowly and to persist at the path. And slowly you will have results. Slowly you will know that yes, it is possible. Yes, I am now more balanced and more focused. Yeah. And the the this meditation that you've shared with us, you know, in the worksheets and in this course, the the being the consciousness, you know, being aware of I am being aware of being aware. Yeah. Is that the same as Mother and Shri those witness Purusha? Uh it it's a bit kind of beyond that although the step we took is the second step in the meditation where i am watching as a witness on the banks of the river right that's the witness watching the play of prakriti prakriti is thoughts movement sense perceptions going on 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 so i am taking the stance of the witness purusha right and at the banks i am watching the play of prakriti thoughts and movements going up and down me and my story all the drama but then when, when I look at the looking, when I become the looking, then it is going much more beyond the witness consciousness. And that mother has shared. It's not something which mother has not shared. In the path towards the psychic being, mother shares that find one thing in yourself which has not changed since the time you were a child. My thoughts have changed, my emotions have changed, keep on changing, my body is keeping on changing. But this knowing capacity, this knowing which is, you know, there through all the ups and downs and that has never changed. Knowing is knowing. So mother also tells us to know ourselves as that consciousness, that awareness. And I will be sharing about two teachers uh, which actually help me too much uh, and they add on to the teachings of uh, Mother and Sri Aurobindo, not in the sense that they expand it, in the sense that the path that, uh, paths that are needed, the steps that are needed in order to go forward in integral yoga, they kind of, these two teachers help us stabilize in that, those two steps. Okay. Knowing ourselves again and again as this consciousness. Uh, we cannot escape this step. So those two teachers will help us on the path of integral yoga. So I'll be sharing uh, later the names. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So Vignesh is asking a reflection, or maybe sharing a reflection. I am sick now, but I find it easier to practice surrender because I physically can't do anything beautiful. Even though my breath is troubled, I can keep the attitude of surrender, knowing well that I really can't do much here. I think that's beautiful. Uh, it's beautiful if you're able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Anyone at this moment? Okay. So we will go uh, quickly back again to the, I hope I find it again. Wait. Oh, just a second. I'm yeah, here it is. So I'll pay, uh, connect to the sh screen again, the presentation. And uh, we will touch upon the warrior spirit which is needed since there are many, many challenges and they will remain. They will remain. So it's, it's good to see what the masters have said about these challenges. So this is coming from Saint Kabir. It's, it's in Hindi, but don't uh, worry. I'll be translating it in English also for those of us who have issues. So Kabir has talked about uh, being a warrior on the path. When we became, begin to come back home, when we begin to know ourselves as this consciousness, it's not an easy path. 
there are many many challenges easier said than done hmm? so he says that there is a warrior spirit that is required on the path so he one of few couplets i have uh, you know put down here he says sura tabhi parashiye lade dhani ke khet purja purja hai pade tau na chhade khet so you call that person a true warrior who is fighting for the true lord and even if his body goes to pieces he would not leave the ground he would not leave the battlefield so even if there would be difficulties challenges all kind of distractions and difficulties you know i will go again and again down i will lose my stance as conscious presence i will come back to it again i will come back to it again i'll come back to it again you know so that's the shamelessness that is required then the second one it says ab to jujhe hi bane mudi chale ghar dur sir sahib ko sompte socha na kije sur so a true warrior would not have a second thought once he knows that i will have to fight for the lord and i want to fight for the lord and when he says you know the uh, first line he says that i am now going away from my comfort zones ego loves comfort zones it likes to be settled so not wanting to be settled at all the only place you settle is in the settlement of knowingly knowing yourself as the conscious presence rest of the settlement you don't require hmm? and then he says in the second line sir sahib ko sompte so if i have to give now head for my lord i will not even have the second thought and head means the ego egoistic consciousness me my story you know how spiritual i am how how much a scholar i am this i that we have so that has to be surrender talking of surrender the third one he says kabir yah ghar prem ka khala ka ghar nahi सीस उतारे हथी करे सो पैसे घर माही मीन्स कबीर ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट यू नो टू द डिसाइपल्स हुएवर लिसन टू हिम ही सेज दैट दिस इज द हाउस ऑफ लव ही इट्स नॉट द हाउस ऑफ योर आंट यू नो यू हैव टू गिव द डोनेशन ऑफ योर ओन हेड हेयर सो डोंट थिंक इट इज गोइंग टू कम वेरी इजी ऑल यू आर स्टिकिंग टू आइडियाज ओपिनियंस मी माई स्टोरी ऑल हैज टू गो the wave has to crash back into the ocean again and again you know you have this offering has to be full to the divine and only then you get entry into the house of love and house of love means getting to know our true 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 being our true being is the being of love bhakti duheli ram ki nahi kayar ka kaam sees utare hathi kare so lesi hari naam so here he is saying in the last one he says that it's very hard to be on this path of devotion to ram or the lord it's very hard don't think it it comes very easy nahi kayar ka kaam it is not for a cowardly person faint hearted person sees utare hathi kare you have to give your ego you know you have to give all your opinions about yourself images about yourself and the world you have to offer it to the lord only then you are allowed to be in the divine consciousness so again you know very inspirational that we are not alone we are not alone and this will happen but we all have the spirit also we all have the warrior spirit also so there is a beautiful resonance uh, with the the aryan spirit that sri aurobindo talks of and the warrior spirit of kabir and that's what i want to share with all of you that the, the amount of resonance it is there so i'll just um, okay yeah. aryan spirit so i've just uh, put out few chunks of words from uh, sri aurobindo here he's talking about who is an aryan certainly it means also the knowledge of all things and charity and reverence for all things even most apparently mean you know we were talking that day of beggars on the street and you know all that even most apparently mean terrorists criminals does not matter you know who is it even if when we think begin to think that oh my god i am so mean 
reverence. Can I see the divine face even there? That's the challenge. Even those things which are ugly and dark. Am I able to see the divine presence there? For the sake of universal deity who chooses to dwell equally in all. Since everything, Isha Vasi Upanishad, this world, this creation is the habitation, inhabitation of the Lord. How can I say that something is too mean and I don't want to touch it and the other thing maybe is too superior? So to be able to, Aryan is that the person who is able to, that spirit which is able to see the beauty, see the divinity, even in most ugly, dark and mean things. To see the blessing in your suffering. Hmm? But also, this is again very powerful, but also the law of action is a choice. Right action is a choice. The preference of that which expresses the Godhead to that which conceals it. In, at each moment in my life, I have a choice. The choice is whether to operate from the egoistic self or to operate knowingly as the conscious presence. Where am I operating from? Every moment there is a free will. That's the choice Aryan has. But also the law of right action is a choice. And always the right action comes when I'm seated as the conscious presence. Hmm? The preference of that, I'm now preferring. What am I preferring? I'm preferring that which expresses the Godhead rather than which conceals and makes me do meanly activities. So I, I give preference. We were talking you know, uh, the other day about Nachiketa, that he chose the beneficial over that which is pleasant. So in this moment, am I choosing the beneficial or am I choosing that which is pleasant? No? But which may be harmful. Right? And the choice entails a battle, a struggle. So it does not come easy. There is a battle. Old habits will overpower you. Again and again, you will feel the need to give in to the desire. That will happen. It's a battle. Hmm? The Kurukshetra, the battle of Kurukshetra, you know, it's not happening outside. It may have happened outside. It also happens inside every day. So where am I seated? Oh, the choice entails a battle, a struggle. It is not easily made. It is not easily enforced. So, you know, what Swapna was sharing, we are all in this together. We all have to go through this Bhavsagar, the, you know, the struggle of again getting in touch uh, truly with as the conscious presence because we have lost too much ourselves in the old patterns of living as the ego so it takes time to give us that time and at every moment to also choose what is rightly expressing the godhead not to choose the ego if possible Whoever makes that choice, <clears throat> whoever seeks to climb from level to level up the hill of divine, there is no end, up the hill of divine, fearing nothing, deterred by no retard retardation. You know what Sharadaji was sharing, that I get lost again and again, and then I feel guilt and shame, doesn't matter. Deterred by no retardation, no defeat. And uh, why no defeat? Because uh, if I have seen enough of ugliness and meanness and weakness in me, uh, then it is easier to relate with a criminal that he also have Buddha nature. Since I have fallen too much into failures at times, that person can also get lost, but he also can revive himself. He can also uh, make the Godhead shine. He can water the seeds which are beautiful. So having that hope, shrinking from no vastness because it is too vast for its intelligence. Many a times, you know, we are filled with this idea of self worth, you know, that I'm not worthy enough. Maybe that person is more worthy. Oh, he has natural talent. But I, I am not worthy. You know, I am unfit for all this beauty. And um, the, she, mother says that the divine does not think so low of us. The divine has many high expectations from us. So to not think that I am not worthy of this vastness. I am not worthy of this beauty of consciously knowing myself as the Godhead within Shrinking from no vastness because it is too vast for his intelligence. No height because it is too high for his spirit. No greatness because it is too great for his force and courage. He is the Aryan, the divine fighter and victor 
द नोबल मैन एरिस्टोज बेस्ट एंड द श्रेष्ठ ऑफ द गीता एंड ऑल ऑफ अस आर दैट देर इज नो कैटेगरी हियर even if you are a beginner on the spiritual path equivalent capacity is there the only thing is the matter of choice you know the, which what are you choosing right now that is where we have to use our freedom you know? intrinsically in its most fundamental sense arya means an effort we have we have been talking of effort we have been talking of practice arya means an effort put that effort make that practice get up early in the morning if needed stabilize yourself as the conscious presence give away you know those those hours of sleep if required or an uprising and overcoming overcoming our tendencies loops of patterns repetitive old behaviors the aryan is he who strives and overcomes all outside him and within him that stands opposed to the human advance self conquest you know exceeding our own limits becoming a better and better version of my own self is first law of his nature he overcomes earth and the body and does not consent like ordinary men to their dullness inertia dead routine and tamasic limit limitations you know so to so to be very conscious that we have all the power we have all the energy to put effort and to put the effort at the right direction not to be lazy laziness uh, is something which we have to be really cautious of sorry just a second yeah he overcomes his life uh, energies and refuses to be dom dominated by their hungers cravings you know all these desires craving um, you're missing something and you just want it you can't be okay with it rajasik passion this the idea of consuming let me consume so that i can be full i am full so i don't need consumption you know he overcomes the mind and its habits he does not live in a shell of ignorance inherited prejudices and ideas pleasant opinions but knows how to seek and choose to be large flexible in his intelligence even as he is firm and strong in his will hmm for in everything he seeks truth what is the truth you know what lies beyond the appearance in everything he chooses the height and freedom yeah sorry self perfection is the aim of his self conquest therefore what he conquers he does not destroy so we were talking about the power of transmuting with love transmuting suffering of others with love you know that is the power we are not destroying anything we are not hurting anything but we are transmuting yeah i will share sofi i can share this text uh, on the whatsapp he knows that the body life and mind are given to him you know all these are instruments these are tools beautiful tools thoughts imaginations feelings the body such beautiful tools we have been given he knows that the body life and mind are given to him in order to attain to something higher than they so rather than seeking satisfaction of the desire vital and whatever can i use them as a tool for something higher no therefore they must be transcended we must not give in to their demands again and again and overcome their limitations denied their limitations denied the absorptions of their gratifications rejected and these can be only re rejected when i have already got something precious just like we were talking yesterday if i have to get rid of an addiction and the friend keeps on saying okay you leave cigarette leave cigarette leave cigarette i would not be able to leave it you give me something better than the cigarette you know so something better than the ego is the conscious presence the divine nectar put yourself there absorb yourself there so that now the ego slips off now i let go of the you know it kind of you know the idea of renunciation the renunciation of the ego how can i renounce the ego by attaching and clinging to the divine consciousness otherwise if i keep on pushing the ego oh ego ego you go away why are you still there not going to happen so only when i am clinging to something higher 
I have already got the divine nectar, the immersion in the holy Ganges. Only then I I can deny the little little gratifications that they continually need, that the ego continuously need, since it is working mostly for a from a sense of lack. Yeah. Highest. So the divine, the highest of that, he is the servant. He is the servant of the truth. He is the servant of love, beauty, harmony, compassion. Kindness, wisdom, knowledge. Of the highest, he is the servant, lover and seeker. When it is attained, he pours it forth in work. So when I connect deeply with my conscious essence, conscious presence, I pour out this in my work. I pour it out in my relations. Love, joy and knowledge upon mankind. The, the idea of bodhisattva, you know, that... Why am I doing this? I am doing it for all the sentient beings, including your own self. For always, Aryan is a worker and warrior. So it's not a passivity. We were talking yesterday about, you know, one can become passive. It's not a passivity. If you are truly in touch with that conscious presence, you're very active because you have no selfish desires of your own. You have no energy to drain here and there. So what to do? Okay, put it into good work. He spares himself no labor of mind or body, whether to seek the highest, to truly stabilize myself in the divine consciousness, seeking the highest possible, or to serve it. Always he fights for the coming of that kingdom in himself and in the world. So also always, not only my own self gets stabilized in consciousness, may all the beings get rooted in their inner Godhead including the most closest ones, which I may hate at times. So they may also receive that divine grace that they center themselves, root themselves in that divine consciousness within them. The Aryan perfect is the Arhat, transcendent consciousness. And then he continues. It's a beautiful long passage and I'll, I'll share it with all of you. Yeah, I think that was about the Aryan spirit. So I, next is going to the prayer. I'll take a pause here. Uh, yeah, are there any reflections or, I don't know, questions? I'll just continue and please feel free to unmute and share at any moment. So the next tool on this path, since there will be challenges, is uh, to pray. You know, when we teach, we become a teacher. And when we pray, we become the prayer. We become the prayer. We are the prayer. That's the beauty. And uh, mother has left so many hints and clues for us that they are enough for a lifetime. And uh, this text uh, that mother has left us, her diaries of prayers and meditations, Alok, Dr. Alok Pandey has uh, reflections on his YouTube channel on prayers and meditations by the mother. And we, uh, from Living Light, we also have a kind of a nine-week course going on reflecting upon prayers and meditations by the mother. So those of us who are interested, some of us are already part of it. And even if you don't want to be a live participant, you can catch up with the recordings where we uh, reflect upon mother's prayers and meditations and then we share our reflections in those sessions every Tuesday. So I can share the YouTube link. You can also go through those or what but the better I was sharing was that Dr. Alok Pandey has his reflections on prayers and meditations by the mother. Very elaborate reflections. So uh, today I have took out a few excerpts from these prayers by the mother which I would be uh, requesting actually, one by one, if uh, each one of you can unmute rather than me reading it out, if one by one we can read just a bit uh, like the first part of it and then we can reflect and then the second part of from the other prayer and then we, we can reflect. Yeah. So anyone who would like to go through the first part? May I go? Yes, please. Yeah. How many times a day Still, I act without, without my action being consecrated to thee. 
I at once become aware of it by an indefinable uneasiness which is translated as a pang in my heart. For a moment, I am sad until I dive into thee and there, losing myself with a child's confidence, await. Yeah, beautiful. You know, so she is the divine mother and she has taken human birth so that she can, you know, guide us how to chart our way forward through this inconscient, you know, so much resistance that is there. So she has dipped herself in these challenges so that I can deal, you know, I can share what is the passage ahead. So she says in this prayer, she shares that even now, how many times a day I act uh, where I'm acting out of the outer you know, consciousness, I'm not fully consecrated to the divine presence, but I become aware of it. So to be conscious of this unease that, oh my God, I acted out of the ego again. No, it, it was a very selfish action uh, or word or whatever, you know, what, whatever karma that happened out of it. So we were talking about unease, you know, to be, to feel uneasy when you are acting very meanly and from the ego center. So she recognizes that meanness and uneasiness. And she says that it gives me a pang in the heart. You know, I feel so uneasy that, oh my God, why have I done that again? You know, since old habits die hard. So it's not for the mother. It's mother is giving her example so that we can understand you know, what happens in us. And then what is the solution that is she shares? She shares that I dive into thee. So she is not trying to fix the dots in the head. Trying to overthink, oh my God, oh my God, let me think how to correct it. She says the best way I found is to dive, to take the plunge in the true consciousness which we have been stressing upon. Take a stance as the conscious presence and stabilize yourself there. Don't try to too much think in the head, finding solutions uh, of our difficulties in our life. And when we plunge ourselves in that dip, insights come, intuitions come, and we are guided towards the right path. So it's not that you will not get resolutions. But most often, the limited mind cannot you know, access that divine consciousness. So it's good to have the wave crash back into the ocean so that when the wave arises up again from the ocean, it has something more. It knows the right action. Yeah. So that's what was the first pair about. Anyone who wants to go about the next one, read the next one, the lower one. Therefore, pride and satisfaction with oneself, the worst of all obstacles. Very modestly, we must take advantage of all the minute opportunities offered to need and purify some of the innumerable elements, to make them supple, to make them impersonal, to teach them forgetfulness of self and abnegation and devotion and kindness and gentleness. None can escape need of innumerable experiences of every kind and every instance. Yeah, thank you so much, yeah. You know, so again, as we were discussing pride and satisfaction with oneself that, okay, I am done. I have found whatever needed to be found and maybe it's time for the others to find it. So the satisfaction with oneself, thinking of yourself as the superior and people who are somewhere else as the inferior. And this happens with each one of us again and again, especially on the spiritual path, you know, the spiritual ego that develops. So therefore, pride and satisfaction with oneself is the worst of all obstacles. So the mother does not say the worst obstacle is the difficult person right in front of you. She says, this is the inner obstacle. Very modestly, we, were, we must take advantage of all minute opportunities, all the little, little blows, all the you know, things that happen offered to ned and purify, to like really make them supple and more plastic, more flexible, how you make the dough. You know, and teach them the forgetfulness of self, not to always remain obsessed with me and my story. What is there in the store for me here? You know, to let go of the me now. 
to to offer the me to step back from the me what liberation is there stepping back from the me the prison of me forgetfulness of self and abnegation and devotion and kindness and gentleness cannot be stressed enough you know none can escape need of innumerable experiences and even if i have ha- i am having challenges and difficulties and all the troubles on the path which are specifically those which are not self created most of the misery is self created Le- let let me go through it you know because all these experiences are making me more mature they are making me more ripe so that this ego can be offered so each experience each failure of not doing what is the right thing is something which helps on the path yeah so two more uh, i think yeah we have a few more uh, anyone who wants to read the first one here on the slide yeah monica shall i read hello yes. yeah. yeah please please yeah. go ahead. Yeah. yeah so long as one element of the being one moment of the thought is still subjected to outside influences not solely under thine it cannot be said that the true union is realized yeah thank you so we see this again and again happening with ourselves that we are there stationed with the breath very okay and then something comes and i am swayed again you know and then many a times even during the day i act out of the egoistic consciousness right so mother says work for me to do so take it in my stride work for me to do so long as even one element of the being is not or thought even thought these all these self obsessive thoughts me my story you know how should i feel complete even one movement of thought is still subjected to outside influences what person said that to me you know listening to all these senses and you know over being overwhelmed by that influence and not solely under thine not completely being there as that conscious presence it cannot be said that the true union is realized and we all know that we have a long long way to go because things happen and we do get swayed so let us be on the path you know so mother is just telling that it's okay and go ahead moving on and on yeah so the next one james you would like to read yeah i was just about to offer actually yeah in peace and silence the eternal manifests allow nothing to disturb you and the eternal will manifest have perfect equality in face of all and the eternal will be there we must not desire to see thee for that is still a mental agitation which obscures thy eternal presence yeah thank you james so we cannot stress enough the importance of this silence you know mother says that uh, in silence the soul you know it's the seat of the soul so it's very very important to quieten ourselves very important to rest all the mental agitation to know through our experience that i i did not get anything there running after those thoughts haven't i done enough haven't i ran enough after those glittery bubbles which show that you will be complete just follow me haven't i ran enough so if we have ran enough and if we are convinced that we did not get anything there and we will not get anything there it's then easier to rest in ourselves so mother says in peace and silence the eternal the divine consciousness manifests it it shows itself not through these eyes but we know we know allow nothing to disturb you and the eternal will manifest and this perfect equality we were talking about that even in the face of bad situations let me see what is the good here so equality that i i don't crave for a good situation to make me complete i am okay and i don't crave uh, crave for a bad situation also and neither do i want to run away 
from the bad situation because every bad is hiding some good right yeah so moving on i think yeah here uh, we have two more to go it, it, it i think it would be nice if one of us two of us can read one by one anyone who yeah can i yeah yeah please it is thou who art the doer in each thing and each being and he who is near enough to thee to see thee in all actions without exception will know how to transform each act into a benediction yeah thank you abhijit ji yeah thanks so uh, without exception you know so such a long way to go such a long way to go it is thou who art the doer in each thing and each being and he who is near enough to see thee to see thee in all actions even the good bad worst ugly doesn't matter without exception so we are stepping back from duality we are seeing we are able to see everything has a purpose okay let me see what is the progress that i have to make through this experience hmm? will know how to transform each act into a benediction we are all alchemists so can we now get to work rather than blaming and complaining and wanting things from others can i just now get to work and do the alchemy hmm? yeah and this is the last one anyone who feels like uh, reading it out yeah i can go ahead i await without haste without inquietude the the tearing of another veil the union made more complete i know that the veil is formed of a whole mass of small imperfections of attachments without number how shall these disappear slowly as a result of countless small efforts and a vigilance not faltering even for a moment or suddenly through a great illumination of thy all by saint cloud yeah thank you so much jyotsna yeah so you know again Uh, things are challenges challenging and there would be many many hard crusts that need to be pierced through veils of ignorance one after the other need to be shed but then that's the way you know there is there is no other way so mother says here that i await without haste it's not that i'm frustrated that oh my god i'm still so ignorant and you know when will this happen i await without haste without inquietude the tearing of another veil you know uh, again and again we see that the divinity is right here we are unable to see it there are walls that make us kind of blind to know the divinity to divine consciousness hmm? tearing of another veil of ignorance the union made more complete to to get more stability you know if you actually look at it you know the experiment that we have been doing the meditation that we have been doing those of us who have actually experimented with it you will see that how hard it is to sit stabilized as that conscious presence again and again we lo get lost in the, the restlessness of the body and mind and emotions so there is so much to do in that sense we have to put effort otherwise this instrument that has been given it cannot play beautifully so effort is needed so that the fingers can run smoothly over this instrument i know that the veil is formed of a whole mass of small imperfections of attachments without number that's what we have been talking of it is clinging to thoughts clinging to emotions clinging to my sense of self how shall these disappear mother asks slowly you know kabir has a couplet dheere anand nikal dheere dheere re mana dheere sab kuch hoye 
Mali siche so ghada, ritu aaye phal hoye. So he says very slowly, slowly every day you put a little water, you put a little water and then when the right season is there, then only the seed will sprout. It will not sprout if you put all the water in one day. So today I've got to know a new meditation. Okay, I'm trying to sit maybe three hours at a stretch. It will not happen. Once a week, I'm sitting three hours. Every day, I'm sitting 10 minutes. In the day, in the evening, enough. But there is a discipline. So discipline has to be there. The continuity of efforts has to be there. No one can escape that. You know, even if those of us who are good cooks, they are repeatedly cooking. Those of us who write very well, they are repeatedly writing. So it has come with an effort, disciplined effort. So countless number of small efforts and a vigilance. What is the vigilance doing? It is catching whenever the action is from the ego. And it is also seeing, okay, this was an honest action. This was coming from a deeper place. So this vigilance, which is aware of the poisons, a vigilance not faltering even for a moment. Or sometimes it may happen, some happening or a, you know, a, like a great illumination may happen. And through that, you get a glimpse of something powerful. You, you get a glimpse of, uh, yes, here I can be. Something deeper in you, a deep place in you where you stabilize yourself, anchor yourself. That also can happen. Maybe you... Uh, suddenly see something beautiful, maybe a sunset, very deep, very beautiful, and something touches your heart. And then you remember that space that you touched within your being, and then you relive it again and again. So where the divine glory shines in its all uh, kind of brightness, then you can recollect it, reconnect back to it again and again. Yeah, and then just... I think this was what uh, I wanted to share that with the power of prayer, especially with mother's prayers and meditation, then there is a PDF also available. I can share it on the uh, WhatsApp group that those of us who don't have a hard copy of mother's prayers and meditations, they can have this PDF and go through every, you know, one day we can read every prayer and every day you can go through a few lines or pages. Yeah. So let us... Uh, dedicate all this virtue from the satsang today and then we can take reflections yeah would would anyone like to read i think shilpa un, unmuted uh, if you can read the dedication or would like to it would be nice uh, you could not read the prayer though but if you would like to read this it's, uh, it's me it's Vapna. Yeah. um dedication i dedicate all the virtue i have gathered throughout the three times along with the virtue of the victorious ones, the bodhisattvas and all beings, following in the footsteps of the Buddhas and their heirs to the lasting happiness of all the infinite number of beings. Let us take one moment of silence and inwardly dedicate all the virtue uh, that we may have collected through the satsang to the infinite number of beings. Just a moment of silence. Okay, yeah, so great. Um, any reflections, any last comments before we close? Just countless small efforts, constant readjustments, realignments, always returning to our poise, to our source to our conscious presence. Thank you so much, Monica. Yes, thank you really so much. beautiful session. Thank you. Yeah. So we meet for the last time tomorrow, everyone.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. So well. so, thank you, thank you, everyone. I'm assuming there is nothing right now. So yeah, thank you. Yes. Thank Bye -bye. you, Monica. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Monica. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.